So guys, what's one question that you just really wish that people would ask you? What are we all doing here, man? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> Damn, I really caught you guys off guard, huh? Oh no, that's the question. What are we doing, that was a bit, here, man? Why that was are we a bit on philosophical, this earth? Huh? Why are we why are we doing this podcast? And the answer because it's fun. You know what mine is? I wish more people ask questions about nuggies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to Traveler's Tips and Tales. I'm Jake. <laughs> I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. <laughs> and today we're here to answer some of your questions. So recently we took, um, not really a poll, but a part of a giveaway contest on our Instagram. We may do more in the future just to keep your eye out. Follow us at Traveler's Tips and Tales. Traveler's Tips and Tales on Instagram. But we um, we asked you guys about questions that you guys have for us, and um, a lot of you guys gave us some questions, so we wanted to cover some today. So um, starting off, you know, now that I think about it, we probably should have written down the names of the people oh, who asked these questions. I got this, but... dude. I got you. Hold on. <laughs> I'm our social media guy. <laughs> <laughs> we we are a professional podcast. Professional. Super podcast. professional. <laughs> the most professional. I don't All know how right. to pronounce these names, though. That's Holding up. Oh, this is a big problem. <laughs> we can always back out. There's always an edit. <laughs> you know what? We're we're just going to go with the questions. If you asked it, you know that you asked it. I'm going to put this <laughs> next to each of it, and then maybe you guys can tell me how you would pronounce it. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'll be doing while we're doing this. Uh, uh, that looks I, like I don't know that looks like you, Ben, but I don't know if the listeners want to hear you typing. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh well, we're a professional podcast. Super we make the product. They listen. That's how it works, right? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. This is the best. So, okay, so fine, I won't do that with, then, whatever. Okay, then we're not going to do names. We're just not going to do names. Yeah. So, <laughs> our first question... <laughs> Even though Michael, I wrote the name up there. Michael, that's, that's up to you to edit out, honestly. I think it's funny <laughs> enough to leave in, but... Our first question is how to handle the negative stereotypes of RPGs. Which is role-playing games, for those who might yes, not know. Yes, role-playing games. Uh, I think, first of all, we need to figure out well, some people might not even be aware, like, they're born later on, you know, like, some younger people out there might not even know what stereotypes we're talking about. Yeah. Like There's the, a lot of people... It's the, the, the fat, lonely nerd who lives in his mother's basement <laughs> and plays, you know, games by himself, which is actually impossible. All these people are lying. They have friends. They have to. <laughs> yeah, it is literally, like, so hard to play this game without other people. <laughs> Yeah, you would just be writing a book at that point. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Basically, uh, and most people, you know. I feel like to the be negative fair. stereotype, if you've seen, like, that South Park meme, where it's the, like, neckbeard fat dude at the computer. He's like, that's actually. It. That's it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That is a that pretty guy? accurate description of myself, but I still find it hilarious. I know, I was gonna say, not gonna lie, it's pretty spot on for the three of us. Kind of. Like, <laughs> Jacob, you're skinny. <laughs> I, have, I'm, I used to be a lot skinnier, though. You have I've gained a lot gained of weight since I've, played, since I've got, started playing got, D&D. I've, got, you got I've gotten at least years 50 pounds. To catch up to me, bro. I've got at least 50 pounds. <laughs> You got 20 I, years of eating the left to catch what up. What are we doing? This is yes, not a fat yes. contest. Jacob added 50 pounds to his 100 pounds. Yes. <laughs> this is not he a is fat contest. He is now of average weight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's okay. I added 50 pounds too, bro. It's okay. <laughs> you guys are both beautiful men. I oh, I know. Guys. <laughs> we, are, we are all beautiful men. <laughs> I, I never said anything about me not being a beautiful man. <laughs> Anyways, how do we <laughs> handle the negative stereotype? Exactly, by doing exactly what I just did, actually. By being confident in yourself. Because yeah. people like confidence. If you're confident, people will like you, regardless. And, I have a yeah, huge and group of friends now. Honestly, and, and it's uh, it's no question that there's always going to be those type of people that are going to be trying to be mad at you about you know your appearance. Or even, I think, another possible thought of this question is like how you play the game um you, you know it's just all about it being accepting yeah 
And, like, <clears throat> as somebody who, growing up, really didn't have that many friends, not gonna lie, uh, I found that just being confident and comfortable in your own skin, that goes a long way as to, you know, just being able to go out there and meet people that will not judge you for what you look like or what you enjoy doing and actually enjoy doing the same things as you. I think that that can go a long way. Just just be yourself, be happy, you know? Yeah. Be happy with yourself and know that you are you and no one can take that away and go out there and you find people that respect you for that and that love you for that. I think that surround that's... yourself, surround yourself with positive influences. Yeah. yeah in your life, you know. I, I think the biggest thing to me, so like a little bit of a story here. So in high school, you know, everybody likes to rag on the people that you know, play like card games or role playing yeah. games and the, the call like them geek. nerds and kind of make them yeah. into outcasts. But you know what? When I was in high school, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it. This little game called Yu Gi Oh! Oh, man. Well, dude, Yu Gi Oh! Yu Gi Oh! was making man. a comeback my junior year, and the people that were bringing it back were the football players. Dude, at my the school. The people that were the it crowd. Dude, there was literally... at my school, dude, it was JORTC kids, and they had uh, dual discs on their arm, and they would stand out and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh and I God. literally I literally heard people talking, they're like, dude, I would never be able to do that, those guys are awesome. <laughs> I am I am outside of the Yu-Gi-Oh! crowd, I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't watch Yu-Gi-Oh! But I remember, I went to the same high school as Michael, I'm just two years younger than him, and there was a whole room of just a bunch of these dudes and chicks just playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, every lunch, the room would just transform all these desks set up in, like, the way the teacher has it, and then it would just be ripped apart where a bunch of desks <laughs> were being pushed together front to front, so that way people could have duels on them. And Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I thought it was hilarious. Okay. I just like to say, and Michael I was still, there, like, uh, all the time. <laughs> I still play Yu-Gi-Oh! to this day, okay? And now that you brought it up, I'm gonna have a hard time not thinking about it for the rest of this Q&A, not gonna oh, lie. Oh, brother. Well, and, and so... <laughs> The Guys, we've thing, lost the traveler. The big thing that I think <laughs> comes from that is you need to kind of stop worrying about what other people think about what you're doing because everybody's going to have an opinion. It's whether or not you take that opinion to heart and let it affect you. That's when it starts to feel like yeah. you're being rejected by people. So, And honestly, like nowadays, I feel like everyone is kind of like that stereotype nowadays anyways. Like, I, I feel like everyone that i know at some point is like into something that a couple years ago everyone would deem quote unquote nerdy or geeky or whatever like there's a lot of people that are really into board games card games role playing games all these different things like jigsaw puzzles all this stuff that like you know used to have like a negative connotation which i feel like is the general population of the world today like everyone has their thing that they like you know what i mean well you gotta remember like we all grew up you know being taught you know stick it to the man but yeah and so the best way to do that is just to just be a nerd so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. we did like and, and then in college two people that i knew one of them you know he was he was obsessed with being able to perform music and theater and then he was also obsessed with things that were more physical like martial arts but then he would get down and play D and D and Pathfinder with me and a couple other people all the time, and then the second person, this dude literally looks like Superman, and he was playing D and D with us. Like, yeah, anybody uh, can play. It's such I have an a inclusive question. game. I have a question for you, Michael. Yeah. These guys, did they play a monk and a barbarian respectively? No. Oh. That would have been fantastic. Dude, I'd love hoping, to see... Hoping for a small world. Dude, I would have loved to see, like, the guy who's into martial arts stand up and act it out and just do, like, a flying oh, heel yeah. kick or something. <laughs> oh, for a God, little bit of time, so my awesome. brother... A little bit of a story here. My my brother, um, I tried to get him into D&D &D once and, and, like, the rest of my family. And I was gonna, like, try and run a one-shot for them. This is, like... A long time ago, <laughs> like like before I ever did anything DMy, like in, even in the jailhouse of DMing before, and um, I tried to like build up these characters for all of my family members. And my brother, who's into martial arts, he was like, "Oh, I'm totally gonna play a monk. He's gonna be a human monk, and his name is gonna be his own name." It was hilarious. He was like, "I'm literally just making me as as this game." <laughs> I thought it was so funny. 
but yeah so to to kind of move on to the next question here uh, which I feel like we kind of already answered with the last one is um, how to embrace yourselves for what you like. It's really just, you know, it's about figuring out what you like and then just sticking with it and being confident and surrounding yourself with other people who, who support your decision and, 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 you know, whatever. And also it's just like have a good attitude for others as well, you know, because if you're not supporting those around you, how can you expect them to support you for your own? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure when my coworkers first met me, they they kind of judged one more than the rest, but <laughs> you know, I mean, over time they kind of learned a little bit about the game and the passion that I have for it. And yeah. now they listen to this podcast. <laughs> and now we have gigantic character sheets up on the wall. <laughs> yeah, we have character sheets on the wall at work that are like 2 feet by 3 feet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this it is, is, this is amazing. <laughs> anyways, uh, so yeah, that one was kind of short because we kind of covered it with the first question anyways for the most part. But um, to the next question, um, how to find your quote-unquote group. Um, I got to say for me, I think the best option is to do what we did and um, try and find a local game store. Maybe if it's not so local, you know, try some of these other options we're about to talk about. But I think the best way is to go check out a local game store because then you're supporting the local game store with whatever purchases you might make for D&D or whatever. And, you know, you just got to get your name out there and, and try and find a couple of other homies that uh, have the same hobbies as you. Shout out to Forgotten Path Games. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, PG. speaking of Forgotten Path Games, uh, I don't know if I told you guys, but there's some bad news from Forgotten Path Games. I think you uh, did tell us. Yeah. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, there was huge fires in California. If you didn't know, you'll soon know, because the wind is blowing it all over the world. <laughs> um, and our friends over at Forgotten Path Games, they, they got hit pretty hard by, by that fire. Uh, yeah. Their house got hit, so it, it's a rough time for them right now. So yeah. if any of you guys are in the area, if you want to go over there and check them out and... Just Maybe support spend, them. Just spend a couple bucks, buy a dice set or something. Yeah, Spoil yourself. Something, it would it would go a like long that. way for them. Yeah, pour one out. Sucks. <laughs> very very sad. But to get back to the question, uh, another other other some other options, you guys. Uh, so you can always go on RPGTableFinder.com, and that is a website that was pretty much made and engineered by the guys over at How to Be a Great GM. That's a YouTube channel. I'm a huge fan of. Man, I gotta yeah. get that guy on here. <laughs> um, but it Mental essentially it lets you it lets you put in uh, your information and find tables that are nearby you, and it lets you chat with everybody and um, meet them before you actually go and meet up. It's it's mainly meant to help you find people that are nearby that you can play with. It also helps mm -hmm. you find people online, like at Rule Twenty or through Discord or any other thing where you could meet online. And it's meant to help people find groups that are interested in the same type of game, which I think is also yeah. very important. Yeah. You you have to find people that are into the same things as you. Like if exactly. you have if you have a group that is all combat, oh dude, you guys you got this. You're solid, you're just gonna kill everything you see mm -hmm. and you'll be great. Mm -hmm. Uh if you find a group that is all role play, oof, you you guys will have the, the greatest stories ever crafted. The biggest feels. <laughs> yeah, but if you could find somewhere in between that fits for you guys, it, I know that's probably what we have is about that. So yeah, it, it yeah. works great either way, as long as it's not like, I'm the only guy that likes combat, and that's all I want to do in this party. I would recommend finding a new group. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just yeah. going to be bored forever, you know? That's that's no good. Yeah. I'm curious. I haven't really looked into um, RPG Table Finder much, but do they also have, like, um, different sorters for, like, what type of game do you play like yes not only not only like what edition of dungeons and dragons but also yes. is there like yes, they do. like the star so, wars game yes, they, do. And they like, have they have like the star like wars pathfinder things. uh call of cthulhu they have all even that like stuff. warhammer yes. question mark that's yes that's cool. and this is the that same is people cool. that made world and oh nice yes these are the same people that made world .com. so they cool. are connected so if you find a group you can read about their world that they have made on the world end before you decide that you want to join or want to try to join it's very cool yeah luckily i have never had to go on there and desperately try to find a group because i just have one yeah but and i found I, us. I, i've gone on roll 20 <laughs> a couple times and i've 
I've actually joined a couple games on there, and, you know, a lot of times you'll have to fill out a little bit of an application thing, but that's also for your benefit, because it's making sure that if you do get into that group, that you're getting into a group that they feel they can click with you very well, and they can all yeah. get along with you, and that what you can bring to the table is also going to allow everybody to have a really good time. And one of the cool things with Roll20 is you can set it to be something where, you know, maybe you want to be in a group, you're just starting out, or you want to be able to help other people learn how to play. You can yeah. single it out to where you're in groups that allow beginners, or say you don't want to deal with that, you're more set for the whole hustle and yeah. bustle of a game. You can set it to where you're not getting any groups that have new players. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's like a really that. cool feature, and you know, just like RPG Table Finder, you can sort by different games. They have all the different editions of D and D. Nice. They have Starfinder, Pathfinder. They have all that stuff on there. It's so nice. And most That's people, rad. they'll usually use Discord along with it, so that way you guys can all voice chat as well. And Roll Twenty allows some other features that. I, I honestly recommend if you're wanting to play an online game, at least go check it out. It has a fairly steep learning curve for a DM, but if you learn it, it is so rewarding. Oh, that's neat. Um, another little tip that I would just say is that don't stop looking. I feel like a lot of people start to try and look around. Maybe they find like a game store that's like kind of far from them, so you know maybe they don't want to go over there and and they have trouble learning these new websites or something like that. Just don't stop looking because you know, I mean, how are you gonna? How do you expect yourself to find it if you know, you give up halfway. Just uh, stay determined in uh, looking for your group. They're out there. Believe it. Believe yeah. it or not. They yeah. they are they, out there to play are, D&D or whatever with you. They There's are out there us. and they will uh, welcome you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you're a fellow nerd. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the next uh, question is kind of an open-ended one, uh, but, you know, we're here to answer that one too, is uh, tips for starting DMs. Yes. Definitely. Any big ones you guys want to list off first? My, I have a few things that are huge for starting DMs. First one is be able to improvise. Yes. And this ties into the next one because Preach. you are going to have a plan that you lay out that follows this whole storyline that you have built in your mind and that you wrote down on paper or typed out or whatever you have for organizing your campaign. And then your players completely avoid any hook to it. Yeah. This has happened to me, and because I was not able to improvise, I could not continue that game. Yeah. It was something I was not prepared for. I expected, you know, these are my friends. They'll just go along with whatever I throw <laughs> at them. No, you need to have something that invests your players yeah. and their characters into the story. Try and make sure that you understand... Uh, your players, their play styles, what they enjoy the most about the game um, to the most fundamental level, you know? Make sure that you're... I mean, it is kind of, like, partially... Not fully your job, but partially your job to make sure that everyone is having fun here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of make sure that everyone has something to draw from to, to get joy. Including yourself. Including yourself. Never Don't forget, forget that. that the DM Don't forget is a that. player also. Yep. And they are also there to have fun. Yep. Yeah, and I'm in a few Facebook groups that are dedicated to D&D players and DMs and stuff, and one of the biggest things that I see constantly is people giving me advice of don't over-prepare. Like I yeah. said, your players will constantly thwart your plan that you had. So Literally just throw it out the window. <laughs> plan just for your next session by using what your players have done and where they're headed. Because yeah. being able to just prepare for the next session, one, it makes your life a lot easier. Because you have to spend a lot less time doing prep work mm -hmm. that might not even be useful. And two, it just, you can make it feel so smooth. And, and organic. Yeah, I agree. And as soon as they get to the point that you aren't ready for, just be like, and that's where we leave off for next session. <laughs> You can leave people on cliffhangers with it, and it works so well, and it leaves your players wanting more. Exactly. And All of a sudden, you have you have 
you know, however much time you have in between sessions. I don't know if it's like a week or two weeks or a month or whatever, how often you play, but yeah. you have all this time to prepare and all of your players are super pumped, right? Yeah, they're like, just excited to get going again. They want to know what's going to happen next. Yeah. And just by preparing for one session at a time, maybe occasionally you'll prepare for two or three because it's kind of a huge storyline that they're getting into. Yeah, you, you want to make kind sure of got you have everything now. fleshed out in terms of what exactly like the major plot points are. But don't plan so specifically that you're counting on your players to do any one thing. Yeah, and when we say plan ahead, we also mean that very loosely. You know, just kind of make a couple of bullet points that you want to hit throughout the the thing. Have a couple of, like, maybe combat encounters prepared for possibilities of what they might run into, you know? Like, yeah. even even when we're saying plan, that is kind of a... We're tr we, we, we mean it a little bit more loosely than you might think, too. Uh, any more tips, Benjamin? Our uh... forever DM? self-proclaimed self yes. <laughs> so here's the biggest thing you gotta be able to roll with the punches so yeah. your party's gonna do some whack stuff okay <laughs> whack absolutely whack i tell you hey hey ben you and can just at me next time it's okay actually i was thinking of someone else but <laughs> oh, okay i feel like i pull some whack stuff sometimes you're only one whack this is three Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Triple whack. Better yeah. step up my game. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've hit double whack. I don't know if I've hit triple whack. Yeah. Definitely hit double. But you just got to be able to roll with it. And I've found that, honestly, the most useful tool in all of Dungeons & Dragons for a DM is sticky notes. Not going to lie, <laughs> you don't need anything else except sticky notes sometimes, man. Sometimes maybe, you maybe just... an idea here. Something to idea. stick them to? Well, there's a DM screen, but even then, you can make that out of sticky notes if you have enough of them. You don't need... <laughs> so so here's, here's my reasoning for this, okay? okay sticky okay, notes, okay. sticky notes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's we'll say the party runs into an NPC and they're like, all right, I like this NPC. That's good. You jot that down. On a cough, sticky cough, note, Jeffrey, and you, and you <laughs> stick that to something. Okay, you have that sticky note now. Or let's say you're tracking health. Uh, sticky note, you're done. Oh, throw it away. It's a sticky note. Who cares? Um, <laughs> let's say you're you're making up stats on the fly. Not gonna lie, I've done that a couple times. <laughs> you write it down as you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> they got a plus seven to they got a plus seven to hit, and they have a plus three proficiency bonus, so they must have a plus four. So I'm gonna give them eighteen strength. All right. They just write that down. They have 18 strength. I know that now. Uh, that's a really powerful psychic attack. They're immune to psychic damage. <laughs> <laughs> but they're vulnerable to radiant for some reason. I don't know. Write it down. It doesn't matter. All right. All right. It, it, just write it down. Um, little notes on things, you can write that down. Little reminders for you to remember things, write that down. Little charts, write that down. Sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky notes, sticky yeah. notes, sticky notes. Maybe you can draw little sketches. Of the terrain maybe, for people and just throw it out there and then they have it. And maybe the, the party kind of makes a sketch decision and they're probably going to have to face some consequences in the near near or far future. Sticky Write it down. To remind down. you later. Sticky <laughs> Whenever note. you come across that point, you're like, oh yeah, these idiots. Yeah, sticky <laughs> note. I open my DM screen and there's sticky notes from like three different campaigns and I have them just plastered all over the place. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised amazing. you didn't like... I'm surprised you haven't, like, bought multiple DM screens, so that way you can have, like, this DM screen is full of sticky notes for this one Actually, game, and then this I other have... one. <laughs> I have three, remember? I have three different DM screens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. That's also, great. another huge thing for me, with if you're running a one-shot, you know, you can maybe subvert this a little bit, but if you're running a campaign and you want it to be enticing and you want... To not have to come up with something every single time. Yeah. There's an easy way to get around that. Mm -hmm. You have one guy, the BBEG, the big bad evil guy, that's in the background pulling the strings. Give him a goal. Yep. doesn't matter what it is. Just give him a goal that is evil in some way. That the party will keep interfering in. And every session, you just give them a little thing. Like, like let's say you have this guy and he wants to control all crime throughout the world. Okay. All right. Let's Seems say that that is, your, that is your thing, okay? And he wants to, once he does that, you don't know what he's going to do after that. You figure out that later. But let's say there's this <laughs> one 
local like gang that's not falling in and they're getting in a turf war and people are getting like shot with spare like um uh, with with bolts that are flying in the wrong direction you know just innocent bystanders the party's like whoa people getting shot on the street randomly what what the what's going on <laughs> that's a quest they now have a quest to figure out what is going on around here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there's tons of different ways that could go. They could, and join, that's a great way to improvise like, it too. You know, yeah, like you're walking through the market, you're going shopping. You know, there's a great deal on this magic item. You know what I'm saying? But maybe you think to yourself, last second, that's a little too strong. Uh, you get shot, <laughs> 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 and then you see a couple guys Boom. run into an alleyway. Boom! Boom! Side quest. You yep. got a whole extra session there. Yep. Congratulations, you're a DM. And the party, exactly. none the wiser. It was all planned out. Yep, exactly. Genius, big brain moves by the DM over there. I'm not gonna lie, I put maybe like uh, thirty minutes to prep each week for my actual game. Jeez, uh, I yeah. would. You fooled me. You have definitely fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, remember, I think yeah, uh, the other day when I was making stat blocks. Yeah, that was it. That was the only that was I've it. done. And yeah. that was a buildup of like a month of me not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we these guys that we thought were like on our tails for so long. I and then you were just like, oh, I gotta make those guys. Now it's just at your house, like what? <laughs> I was like, they're not even like existing yet. And you're like, nah. <laughs> that was great. Uh, anyways, I think I think we got some pretty good um, basic tips on uh, starting DMs, and we'll probably go over more and in a later episode anyways but another uh big thing for dms here um do you guys have any ideas on easy ways to balance out combat here's the here's the quick and easy answer to that question there is no True. easy way to balance combat that is fair <laughs> combat just like in real life if you get into like if you walk into a, like a war zone and it's a firefight dude it is every man for themselves and anything can happen <laughs> you yeah. can you can walk up and you can fifth level divine smite the bbeg and crit and just obliterate them in two seconds and then you're left like uh there was a second phase to that fight i think <laughs> i'm gonna make one <laughs> like, yeah yeah give me five minutes like, <laughs> one of those one of those making a stat block on the fly there just like yeah um, just this like, guy uh, but better <laughs> yeah sometimes man you throw a boss at your party and it's just not good enough and you're just like uh, i'm gonna ignore that he's at negative 80 hit points right now <laughs> he has uh 300 more <laughs> When the rogue off, it, the rogue in the corner is just popping off. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh man, maybe this guy has more hit points than I thought. The thing with balancing combat and what makes it so difficult is you're trying to make something that'll be challenging to your party, but not so challenging that they're outright going to die. Yeah. But this is also going to depend on the roll of the dice. Yes. <laughs> yes. The dice are impossible to... To take a factor in in fact um so we've been playing just a quick side note here we've been playing uh the three of us with our our groups um we've been playing a lot online um through discord and we have a bot that we use <laughs> to roll the dice with because it's just a lot easier to just be able to type it out and its name is avre and i think um it is like the most commonly said thing while we're playing the game it's just like avre giveth and Avre taketh away. <laughs> because Avre from, is the dice. You will go from is all of the dice. five natural 20s in a row to just every time you roll, you're failing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, though. I feel it, it's, it's hilarious. Everyone's just like, yeah. be nice to Avre. Avre is cruel. <laughs> Avre will yeah. punish you. However, <laughs> all this being said, I do have an, yeah. a generally average easy way to calculate challenge rating. Well, we're all ears, Benjamin. Uh, a player's level, let's say they're level like six, okay. half of that in challenge rating is equal to that, about. Generally speaking. A CR3 is about equal to a level six. Advantage. So like they have the same power level you're saying? Yes. Okay. So And it, it doesn't scale exactly correct. Like obviously... 
if there was a party of level sixes, you would not multiply three by four to get twelve and throw a CR yeah. twelve at a party of six. No, no it doesn't also, scale quite like that. Also, character like items, like like one character might have a lot of items and one might not, so it's kind of loose in that way as well. Yeah, I'm guessing. Generally, yeah, generally speaking, uh, like half of a player's a single player's challenge rating is about equal to that challenge rating. Okay, like All right. that that's. That's what I have found. Or uh, it actually goes backwards, though, if you are throwing something higher level at the party. <laughs> okay. It's, so if you take, like, a level 20 adventurer and you're like, man, what CR would they be if I wanted to throw them at, like, a, a party? It would be about 10. It would be about CR 10. Okay. You can't take. You can't go opposite direction with that. Not, not always. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it's... Generally speaking, you can do that. Or let's say you wanted to have like a, a really easy time. You're just like, I want to open this character builder and build a boss for my party, and they're all like level twelve. It's just like oh, I'm gonna make like a level fourteen character and throw it at them or something like that. Or <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. give them a bunch of magic items to, to, to crank up that challenge rating because that's an easy yeah. way to crank up challenge rating, and it gives you loot that you already know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Have it. Um, the only issue with that is that every party is different, as you said. Um, sometimes you give them magic items and they, they find ways to get them to be kind of broken, or <laughs> they just roll really well on stats, or they take spells you weren't expecting, maybe. Or maybe the dice are just in their favor today, you know? Yeah, man, you, you, can, you just gotta roll with the punches, man. There's a like, lot of factors. Like, let's say you get to this vampire lord that you've been building up for ten sessions, and they kill him in three rounds, you know? Like... Um, yeah. Well, crank, maybe give him some more HP. <laughs> give him some more HP, or you know, crank up, crank up something, do something. You know. Yeah. Maybe that wasn't really him. Maybe there was someone pretending to be him, and the real him has gone missing for some reason. Yeah. Maybe now that's your new quest. Where did this vampire lord go? What happened to him? Mm -hmm. Where is he right now? I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> He's right behind you. Oh no! Behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can raise like the challenge rating of like goblins or basic enemies or something by giving them, you know, increasing their stats or generally increasing the amount of damage they can put out, increasing their health, armor class. Yeah. You know, give a basic goblin like an orb of elemental destruction or something. I think <laughs> just like, yeah. I think I think one themselves. good one good example of this is uh, a couple episodes ago and and Michael's one shot. Uh, I think Michael is telling us about it. Those goblins that we took out. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was like, there was. Michael was like, yeah, there's like 13 or so goblins in there. They'll 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 do great. They'll you know that'll be pretty pretty level with the uh, you know me Ben and and our NPC. And then like my fourth level spell like would have killed all of them immediately. And so Michael was just like, you know what? Um, they all have like three times the hit points now. <laughs> oh no oh no or something so like that. let me let me explain here so <laughs> when i was prepping for that one shot i did not take into account the fact that jacob was playing a spellcaster that has very powerful area yeah. of effect spells yeah affect groups of people it was like and, kind of his whole thing even and so i was i was creating this encounter and i was like I want it to be somewhat challenging, but I, I don't want them to have to worry about it because it's just a fun little one shot. That yeah. Yeah. There's no real danger in it. <laughs> and so I, I originally thought, oh, you know, I'll just throw like seven or eight goblins at them. But then I made the last second decision. I was like, no, no, seven or eight, you know, that's not enough. I'm going to make 13 of these. And two of them are going to be goblin bosses. I don't remember <laughs> off the top of my head what goblin bosses originally have for health points. But regular goblins have seven. <laughs> and I started I, off by dealing like 20 you, something to all of them. You dealt like 20 or 30 something to them. So I was like, all right, these goblins now have 70 hit points max. Uh, and the goblin bosses Literally. each have 100. <laughs> Multiplied it by 10. That is hilarious. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, was, I was like, I don't want this to be over that quick. <laughs> 
literally, yeah. it was like it wasn't. It wasn't even co- combat hadn't even started yet. It was technically still a surprise round. So it's yeah. Like, I was I was yeah. wanting everybody to kind of have a moment yeah. where they can jump in there and do at least exactly. a little bit of damage instead of and, you just being like, yeah. all right, grab me, spell. <laughs> they're all dead. Let's go. They all get sucked into one spot <laughs> and then just like explode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, and the, that and that combat me. was a whole lot more fun afterwards. Actually, that reminds me of a, another way to, to, to balance combat easily. Okay. Sometimes the easiest way to balance <clears throat> combat is to overpower your enemies. Because sometimes the easiest way to deal with it is to make your party realize they should run away. Yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. a boss. I'm not going to tell you guys too much about it because this because is going to be a boss in my campaign that will be going on our YouTube channel. Oh. But essentially, okay. they will have access to spells that have double range and double damage. Oh boy, Michael, I'm scared. Wow. It uh, is Michael, meant I'm very to be, scared. I will say, it is meant to be an epic level boss. Michael, I am I am literally pooping my pants right now. Full <laughs> party of level 20. I'm actually, like. I'm actually planning a few mythic level bosses. <laughs> ah, me too, my friend. <laughs> Guys, as as the general uh, consistent player of the group, I am very scared right now. You should For be. all future games. <laughs> you really should hey, be. I hope, that, I hope that the other DMs in our, game, in our group aren't listening right now and they're jumping on this hype train because oh, I am Kevin's not listening. excited. I know he is and I'm so scared. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, I'll be in that game with you, and so will Michael, so we'll all suffer together. Hey, get and ready to write off our characters, folks. And my character <laughs> literally has one method of damage he can do four times a day, that's it. Yo, shout, oh, brother. real quick, shout out to Kevin, who listens to our episodes as soon as they drop every week. <laughs> if you need a mythic level monster, let me know, I'll let you borrow Theros. Hey! <laughs> Calm down, Michael. You're in hey, that game too. If you need a legendary bosses, let me know. I have made many. What is up with you guys? All right, let's move on to the next question. We need I to get made, out of here right I now. I have made more legendary boss like enemies than I have basic enemies. It's a problem. I'm, I'm sorry, Ben, but I can't hear you over the next question. Uh, the next question is finding out what race best suits you um, for your optimal performance. Uh, I would argue that the best thing to do here is just trial and error. Maybe make up a whole bunch of like first level to fifth level characters. Um, you and your buddies all run a bunch of one shots, and you just keep throwing character ideas at the wall until you find one that sticks. And then try and find. Uh, I typically try and find a way to improve my build in a, l- a little bit. Um, a lot of my characters I like to try and play test in, in one shots before. Actually, almost all of my characters I try and play test in one shots before I commit to a campaign with them and then so that way i can kind of work out the kinks and figure out what parts of the character build that i don't really like anymore and what i want to go for in the future yeah that's my, kind of my my, my, my advice from comes from a totally different standpoint <clears throat> uh if you're looking at what race you enjoy playing i personally like to look at the lore and be like yeah. what fascinates me what draws me in and holds me there and also it never hurts to look up stereotypes of fantasy races and be like which one do i want to emulate (laughs) or change or tweak or completely throw off its rocker because why not and just roll with that for a while you know (laughs) also you don't have to stick with the same race yeah i was also might be a surprise to some people out there but you will play in many games most likely and you will be able to play in many races take it take it from me for for the first like year and a half at least i only played halfling (laughs) yeah (laughs) because i I love halflings branch away from that so so much. much as of recent you know you just you run through so many character ideas where where this is what you want your character to be you know eventually accept the fact that you know, your ideas are going to go dry eventually and you're not going to have as much fun playing a halfling or whatever every single time. So then I start branching out into like, you know, uh, I think actually Eberron has, has some really cool... Yeah, I have a half halfling. <laughs> half halfling, half sun elf to make it real complicated. <laughs> yep. But um, but yeah, like all this other stuff, like, you know, uh, there's a lot of cool races out there. Um, I know Ebron has some cool ones. One of my favorite new ones is Warforged. I really like Warforged. But you know, like, don't don't be scared to to have to stick with one. 
don't be scared to, to branch out a little and bit. Very important thing. Uh, there is a very easy way to change races without your character up and dying. You can retire <laughs> characters. Fun fact. You can just yeah. decide one day that this character has done enough and that they want to retire to a small village somewhere and they can walk away. And also sometimes it's just like it thematically makes the most sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Gerald. Freaking yeah. Gerald, man. Or my character Cade. It's just like this this guy doesn't want to adventure anymore. Like it's, yeah. it can just be that simple sometimes. Yeah, so <laughs> a couple notes that I have on this question. Yeah. So... In terms of finding a race that best suits you, that, I mean, there's so many different ways you can go about it. It really depends on what are you really looking for in terms of what suits you. I mean, are you looking for something that you can connect with? Are you looking for something you want to learn more about? You, you really have to look into why you were trying to find that race because Memes? that's what's going to determine what will best suit you. Now, if we're talking for optimal performance, like the question in the Instagram post had said, my thought is if you're going for optimal performance, it's a no brainer to me. You have to go human variant just because <laughs> they get the most versatile bonuses. Nah, and dude, you start not out no more. with the feet immediately. Dude, they don't get the most versatile anymore. Really? Half elves. Half elves. You, Half get, elves. you get a free proficiency. Yeah. In well, skill. no, you get you get two free skill proficiencies, and you, you get magic. And you get magic. Yeah. And you or also instead have... of magic, you can get swim speed, or instead of that, you can get it's just so much. Like, what else is there? There's also like free cantrip. Plus, plus one free to two cantrip. different things. Yeah. Plus one to two different things. Plus and two also, charisma, I believe. Advantage on being. Or you can't be charmed, and like the advantage of being charmed, you can't be put to sleep magically, and yeah. then you can also depending rest. on which one you pick, you can you get four hour rests, and depending on which one you pick, you can get a free wizard cantrip, you can get drow magic, you can get a True. swim speed, you can get True. like oh dude, it's oh my god. Oh. But I also still agree with Michael because a feat a feat at level one is insane sometimes. It's dude. so powerful to be able to do that. Super yeah. great. Sometimes, well, uh, I mean, especially, I can really get behind that because I like to, like, plan out all my ASIs uh, or ability score increases, for those that might not know. You're a fighter, bro. You'll um, get it. <laughs> yeah, You'll but I like back. to try and plan it out and see which one, which feats that I really want to go for. And if I could just get one of those babies right off the start, oh boy, that's a pretty good deal if you ask me. Coming from the guy who's literally never played human. <laughs> <laughs> I've played a few humans, but I, I usually switch I between haven't. like elves and humans. Yeah. I've played a dwarf. I've played a tiefling. I'm a little all over the board. Also, uh, if you want to get some real good races, might I sell you on a <clears throat> halfling? You get a plus two to dex. I would argue one of the best stats in the game. Uh, it controls your initiative and AC and a whole bunch of other stuff, but. Uh, I would also argue deck saves are probably one of the biggest uh, saving throws in the game. But also, uh, you get a plus one based off your subclass. And natural ones, what is that? I don't know what those are anymore. I reroll them all the freaking time because I'm a bad one. I'm super cool. <laughs> all right, if you're looking for the greatest race of all time, may I sell you on Kenku? <laughs> oh my god. The most creative race of all time. <laughs> I've played a Kenku before. I Me too. I have but as well, interesting. But I'm not going to talk about his language. Uh, let's next question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um how to uh this next question comes from someone um on Instagram and it is uh <laughs> how to balance race and class. Uh, don't <laughs> play yeah, me, whatever you want. <laughs> ben and I have a very different thought on this than Jacob. Me and Ben both say, don't do it. It's it's <laughs> more fun to just kind of play around with things and see what you can make out of it. Dude, and 
for hey me. there guys it's me the guy who likes to plan <laughs> everything ahead for my character build everything is important race class it's all Dude, very important here's what you do bro you play a <laughs> goliath that was raised in the wilderness with the outlander background and you are a cleric of moradin because why not <laughs> <laughs> and you multiclass into paladin and you pray to meteor strikes because they tickle your funny bone <laughs> or uh, hey you guys remember that character i told you about before in a story time called uh shayna uh yeah she was a tiefling who was a life cleric yeah that makes no sense and beyond she that also, i like, made broke. sure her ability scores made no sense Yep. <laughs> that was like, that was a character that would literally never come out of my character sheet. <laughs> like, oh yeah, if you like, were to never make that at all, character, ever. I would think that you were Dude. on drugs. It also broke like a bunch of like rules for tieflings. Like you had like such exotic colors for oh, her yeah. and everything. Like she was hot pink. Her skin color was hot pink. Michael her, was. I feel like you did it just to spite me. Just be her like, hair Screw was you, a, Jake. like a fluorescent green. <laughs> And her eyes were this deep blonde. Bro. It was absurdly <laughs> crazy. Dude, just pick a character of mine and you basically have like a what not to do on how to play D&D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow but, works amazingly. But to argue the other side, I think it is a great idea. And what I typically do is just look at the stats. Um, I went over it a lot in our character creation episode, but basically when I'm making characters, I look at, um, I try and figure out what race I want to play based off of what the rest of the party is, um, because if you're anything like me, uh, party, party synergy is very important to you, and so I, I figure out, first off, I figure out what race I want to play, and then uh, after I figure that out, I look at what ability scores are going to be the most important to me and then i start looking at those types of races to figure out what i can do to boost those scores so that they could be higher so that i could be more good at my quote-unquote role in the party <clears throat> but yeah that's that's basically what i do at least um past that it's just whatever i want to play really but yeah i mean it, you could also like look at some of the abilities some of them might be more interesting to you based off of you know what what kind of story you want to tell with your character but yeah that's pretty much all i got for uh tips on how to balance what you have for your race and class it's really just kind of look at the stats and figure it out for yourself is my best advice yeah i i kind of switch back and forth on whether or not i actually synergize it my first ever character in Ben's campaign was the <laughs> classic half elf ranger. Rest in peace. That is that is the classic. And honestly, he was kind of boring. Jacob's character hated him. Well, he was kind of a dick. Uh, he was. He was he was kind of abrasive. He had an abrasive personality. He killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the first of many, many character deaths for Michael. I have <laughs> had four character deaths in this campaign, one of which we will eventually tell the story on. That happened yesterday. Two of which, actually. One of Two them we of already had. One happened, one happened literally yesterday as of us recording it, and it was so... Oh my goodness. Yeah, Dude, so... Feels. I felt so depressed, but I just had to press on because there was still so yeah. much going on, and I was like... I, oh. I feel like you did really good with it, though. You, like, you gave him his, his rest in the middle of the rest of us continuing combat, by the way, and then, like, still moved on. There will be a point of us doing this podcast probably months from now, maybe even a year from now, that you will have heard, out of my four characters in Ben's campaign, you will have heard about three and how they died. Not including the three? one that I just said. <laughs> oh, the one from yesterday? Oh, they'll hear that story. But you just think after a year or so? Uh, by the time we get through that in Harbeck. <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Harbeck yes. is going to be like four episodes of this. Oh, oh, you mean Al is the one they won't hear about. Yeah. Yeah, that one's easily the dumbest. <laughs> that one that one wasn't even worth like going into detail, so it's... that's why I just said he killed himself. Yeah, it's so... Dude. The, the, the viewers must think we're so harsh right now, but it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, a freaking uh, trigger warning, <laughs> by the way. Afterthought. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've only ever had one character death, and it was in a one-shot. It was a one-shot character that survived multiple one-shots. <laughs> and he I, died I... because of something I did. 
I, I don't know it. how. I don't know how, but I've been like the the most consistent player. Like I'm always playing rather than DMing, and somehow I have yet to really have like a character death. And I'm I've, I've I'm kind of like concerned because I feel like I'm always like ready for my character to die <laughs> like if anyone plays D D with me you will know and find out that anytime like my character goes unconscious from no hit points and it gets around to my turn again and it's like all right jacob roll your death save and i'm just like all righty here i go i roll it and i'm just like fail uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just find it hilarious yeah. Anyway, my man's, my man's yesterday didn't even get dead saves. Yeah, it was crazy. So uh, let's just move on to the next topic here. Yes. Um, <laughs> tips on dice throwing is a pretty quick one. Uh, uh, I do the the good old classic. I cut my hand like I'm like I'm holding some water in it or something. I tilt and I just roll it in. I don't really like being an obnoxious roller. I just kind of you know it doesn't make that much noise. Is, is you know it doesn't go all over the place i like it it's nice yeah for me i mean if you can imagine in those movies where the dude is in a suit and he's got a glass of wine or a glass of whiskey and he's just swirling it around in his hand imagine that but your hand is carrying dice and then <laughs> after a few swirls of those dice you gently glide them across the table and that is how I roll. <laughs> well, ben? first of all, I should preface this with most of the time, in between my turns, if I know I'm gonna roll to attack something, I'm already, like, rolling them in my hand. Like, I'm just, like, shaking them back and forth. I do yeah. that all the time. It's like a nervous energy. And then yeah. when I finally get to, I'm just like, ee! and then I just throw them <laughs> as hard as I can towards the nearest dice box, which is usually mine, but not always. And sometimes it hits so hard it actually bounces out onto the table and yeah, it like wrecks right. up, it messes up something. Like if we have yeah. a map or something, I'm just like, ee! Yeah. boom, and it just ex <laughs> absolutely demolishes some random mini or whatever. It's just yeah. like. Dude, um, I, will I used say, to also, get yelled at so much for, like, almost breaking all of Kane's yeah. minis. It's just like, <laughs> I'm sorry I have metal dice. Like, it's not... I, I, will could say use, also, I could use plastic ones, but I'm not going for, to. For those other rogues out there who have to roll an absurd amount of dice, and wizards and spellcasters in general, I guess, but those people who have to roll an absurd amount of dice all at once, <laughs> I also do the... I also do the, like, so, like, you cup your hands together, like they're in a bowl, and the viewers, no one else knows, because I'm literally by myself, but I'm literally doing it in front of myself right now to figure out how to describe it. You cup your hands in, like, a bowl, and then you close it, so it's like, you have, like, your hands are kind of, like, making a diamond, and it's totally enclosed, and then you just shake up and down, <laughs> and then you just open the bottom, like it's a, like it's a, a bomber hanger, just, like, yeah. opening. And then it's like just right into the dice tray. That's how I always used to do like sneak attack dice. Yeah, and then there's also dice towers. You just drop it in, and it pops out at yeah. the bottom. And then there's what our friend Kevin does, which is he has like a mug and he swirls it around in like a like a Cthulhu wine glass yeah. and then like throws it's it real... onto the table. He he does the fancy drink swirl, but in an actual cup. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, it's 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 pretty baller. It's it's all about <laughs> just finding what style just works for you. Yeah. I mean. There's yeah. no right or wrong There's, way to yeah. roll a die. Yeah. I literally just, roll just don't, like... Don't lie about your rolls, though. That's not cool. Yeah, no, don't do that. If you do roll that, them in the open. Roll them in the open, guy, you know. Gags will curse your soul forever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on, on to the next question. Uh, one of the last ones. Um, how to deal with character deaths? <sighs> Sadness, depression, um, anger, acceptance. <laughs> Uh, as the, five as the, the, as the yeah. expert in this department, <laughs> literally I've had four characters, or I've had five characters in your game. Four of them have died. One of them I retired that might come yep. back. We don't know yet. Wait, I'm trying to think of it. When you are a player and your character dies, it can be frustrating because you've, oh, you've yeah. invested a lot of time and energy into creating this character and shaping them and seeing how the world shapes them and it's taken a lot of investment in just this one thing and yes when your character dies it can be very frustrating very disheartening mm -hmm. very emotional for some people i know yeah. two of my character deaths 
were very emotional for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Last night, like, one of our players, not gonna name names, she was actually crying. We Last, were all, I mean, I was tearing up. Like, Last I feel night, like we were all I, I was hard. starting to tear up, and I was speechless for a good 25 minutes. Uh, we started using... We started using Discord to play songs like My Heart Will Go On. Yeah, and Danny <laughs> that's the biggest mood. And uh. it's it's one of those things that it happens. It sucks when it happens. But yeah. there's options. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe you're not done with, like, the kind of story arc that you're trying to portray or whatever. You know, it can always be tough. But I think the biggest tip, um, what I try to do from the very get-go when I make the character is just be prepared for them dying, you know, and kind of accept that they might not die the way you want them to. I think it's pretty hard to, to go through the game without imagining, like, especially once you get to, like, the later levels where you, you figure pretty soon here my character's either going to retire or die, right? You know, it's like getting close to the end of the game. And so, you know, maybe you start to think up of, like, a way that if they were to go you would like it to be like in this certain way so that way it can have this certain meaning for the rest of the party or something like that but you know except that it might not always go like that you know maybe a certain enemy spell will just pop off or or a random crit will happen and you just happen to be low on hp or you know whatever there's a whole lot of stuff that can take a factor into it and just just try and be prepared for it um, I don't really have many other ways to uh, suggest your coping mechanisms, but you know that's, that's kind of yeah. my take well, on it. Well, you gotta remember though, there are options from a DM standpoint and a player standpoint. There is yeah. a thing in D and D called resurrection. You can get resurrected if you die. Yes. However, there are ways that that does not always work. Mm -hmm. um, if you are for story purposes. If your soul gets claimed after you die by some other powerful entity, you're not coming back. I'm sorry, yeah. but that's how it is. Um, maybe there's a way for you to escape. Maybe that's a cool thing your party could go do. They could try to find where your soul went. They could yeah. try to free you. You could have a one-on-one like, -on -one with your DM where you run through trying to get out. And if you fail, like that's your last chance. You know, like That's your chance yeah. to come back. Um, you can offer them a way to come back. Like, just them by themselves, like, maybe something offers them a deal, like, I'll put you back in your body, I'll resurrect you myself, but when you die, next time, your soul's mine. Right? Like, I get like yeah. owner full ownership of your soul at that point. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or, um, I remember there's there's a class that I believe Matt Mercer homebrewed up called Ghost, the Ghost class, where it's meant for characters after they have died. And then it offers them a way to come back or still interact with the party while while dead. There's also yeah. like entire adventures that I've read about that happen in the ethereal plane where you are a ghost and you're trying to earn enough um, like karma points basically to come back and re like re inhabit your body. Uh, like if you got a TPK, that would probably be my number one way. It's just like, well, you guys are all ghosts now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there are lots of ways, but sometimes, no matter what you do, characters will die. And sometimes there's no coming yeah. back. And I think it's a DM's responsibility and the player's responsibility, all the other players in the party, to make it feel impactful, make it feel meaningful. Make sure that it is something that it, it matters, you know? Like, it's not something yeah. that just happens and everyone moves on and deals with it. No, this is something that impacts yeah. your characters. And even then, yeah, maybe you're the type of DM where you're, like, begging for story, and they the party's like, oh, well, we'll resurrect this guy, right? Maybe the resurrection goes a little wrong, a little off. You know, maybe you come back and... <laughs> You have a little bit of a madness trait from the something is something astray. Is Maybe you come back and you feel empty inside. You don't have emotions anymore. Maybe you come back and your shadow is literally gone. You don't have one. You have to figure out what happened. What? Where is this missing part of me that should be here? And we have to go find it and put it back the way it was. Yeah. Just so that you're not getting off. You know, with, because dying's a big deal. You're not getting off with 
scot-free, you know? Um, yeah. And if all that fails, and the character's really not coming back, I think the best way is to describe the afterlife that they have earned and to grant them peace, you know, give them a nice mm -hmm. peaceful or maybe not so peaceful <laughs> view yeah. of what they have <clears throat> earned with their life and, yeah. you know, give them that, that, that peace, give the party and the player. I'd also that. like to say players who aren't, maybe aren't the character who died, but, you know, one of the other players at the table has a character that dies, um, you know, just support them as a human being because um, I don't know about you guys or any other people, but I certainly, you know, pour my heart and soul sometimes into certain, you know, I mean, not every single character exactly, but, you know, a lot of them, you know, and a lot of people care deeply about a lot of these characters that they've been playing for, you know, you know, anywhere from like two, you know, three, four, five you know, 10 years or so, who knows? And, you know, this character can have a lot of meaning behind them. And then, you know, maybe they just don't go the way that they wanted them to or, or, or whatever, you know, just, you know, support your fellow players and, you know, just try and have a good time here, you know? But anyways, um, <laughs> the last question uh, here, we're here to talk about uh, favorite low level items for each class. Yeah, that's a pretty big one for the end. So I think we'll we'll cover that in uh, some future episodes. We're actually um, planning on covering each class individually for the next uh, bunch of episodes. <laughs> so we'll probably tack that onto um, each of those. So stick with us to um, hear more about those, as well as our favorite feats for each class. Um, we're also planning on covering all that fairly yeah, soon i mean each each class can come with two or three minimum of those and it, it's something yeah. that's best to dive into when we have much more time to focus in on each class because going into that alone for yeah. every class we could cover two hours easily <laughs> yeah. there's a lot to talk about yeah so uh yes yeah, uh stick with us and um follow um you know be ready for next week's episode and the week after that and such and such um we're not I'm going anywhere week, so. please we need you we are nothing without you our share viewers us with your friends please do share yeah. us with the president if you can find it the time any president it doesn't matter which oh my one goodness. Just finds anywhere yeah, <laughs> vladimir putin what's up it doesn't have to be the president of a country it come, can be the president come. of like an organization and as long as they have sponsorship ability maybe it's like maybe it's like your high school <laughs> I, yeah your high school class president you know just share that share that with them you know whatever share it with your mom share it with your yeah, grandma man. cousins everybody <laughs> if, if you guys want to kind of keep in touch with what we're doing the best way to do that the what place where we're most active is going to be our instagram and that is yeah. mainly run by ben that is travelers tips and tales on instagram <laughs> Uh, ben is our social media guy. He also runs our Twitter at Tips Tales, our Sometimes. Tumblr at yeah. Travelers Tips and Tales, our Patreon, patreon.com slash Travelers Tips and Tales. And we all kind of monitor the email at Travelers Tips and Tales at gmail.com. And if you go. Yeah, so if you have any further questions that you'd like to ask us, you can ask us there. Also, we do plan on having maybe uh, at least one more video uh for um answering q and a's in the future i'm not sure exactly how near future that will be but we're thinking about putting that exclusively on our youtube channel which is travelers tips and tales on youtube and uh, yeah, yeah if you want a convenient way to find all of our social media and all of our site presence go to our instagram click on our bio we have a link that will take you to any of the places you literally just click on what place you want to go to it'll pop up with a link just click on that and it'll take you to whatever site yep. you chose so that yep. is all i have uh yeah um i think that's it for us this week uh thank you for listening to travelers tips and tales and uh talk Bye. to you later Bye.